What's up, everybody? Tony Beats Guy here, back with my career. Woo! We finally updated our attire, and if you didn't check out the last episode, make sure you do, because we export my guy to uh, PS4 Community Creations. I've seen a lot of people tweet me some cool stuff, so if you actually want to uh, tweet a picture of you playing as my guy, uh, please do, at Tony Beats Guy, or Facebook, or Twitter, or Instagram, or whatever you want to do, but let's get in here. If we just remember, we last left off, we won the Royal rumble match so we should be slated for a title shot on raw apparently i am told do not win the wwe championship so if i get a chance for the wwe championship i do not want to take that one i don't take the wwe championship match well i take the match but i don't win it so randy orton defended against biggie at the royal rumble we we talked about that a little bit but let's get into this Next event. The road to WrestleMania has finally begun. As Royal Rumble winner, you can compete for any championship you want. I want you to make the decision after tonight's match. <clears throat> wow. How funny is that? I had comments of people saying that I look like Cody Rhodes. And now I guess I look like Cody Rhodes. Let's leave our entrance on, though. Um, and do the whole entrance and see what happens. So... Let me crank this volume up a little bit and let's get right into the entrance. Thought it was going to go a little faster. Well, let's find out what's going to happen right now. Right now. So Monday Night Raw is coming to you live from Japan. Woo! I always love when they do the Japan ones, but they always seem to like throw in the Japanese. Uh, they they put the Japanese flag and stuff on there, which I think is cool. I like that idea. It's finally good to be on Raw though, seeing the new graphics and stuff. Considering I haven't got to Raw yet, really, do my entrance or anything. I've been on Smack It Down NXT and uh, Main Event and Superstars. I think I don't know. You know, the B stuff. The B plus player. But now we got Cody Rhodes. So we'll see where this match goes. Hopefully we could do something cool here. Um, we're getting to WrestleMania here. So I think if I can get to WrestleMania before I actually go to the actual WrestleMania, you know, that'll be cool. Because uh, Jeremy and Logan, who are helping me with the Marks documentary, actually just left today. They're traveling via rental car. All the way to California from Omaha, Nebraska. It's a two-day trip. They left this morning, I think at like 8 or 9 in the morning. And then they're going out there, and then they'll be gone. Uh, we'll meet up Friday. So that's our plan thus far. I fly out Friday. Um, they took all the recording equipment, all that fun stuff. I got a whole bunch of fun stuff planned. I, I'm super excited to go to WrestleMania, though, because I have, like, access I get to go to. And NXT I'm going to, going to the Hall of Fame, going to to uh just a whole bunch of cool activities i get to go to and it's going to be fun because i get to meet up with a lot of people uh there's a lot of people from omaha who are going as well that i'm friends with um and then there's like uh like the group i went with last year they're going again which is cool and um i'll meet up with them sometime somewhere 
and uh, a lot of YouTubers are going. So hopefully I can meet up with YouTubers. And if there's fans around, um, meet up with us there and say hello. Is it me you're looking for? No, but I'm I'm so excited to go to WrestleMania just to like get to WrestleMania and like just enjoy like access and all the events leading up to it. And that should be very, very interesting. But something really interesting that happened yesterday on ESPN. Brock Lesnar announced that he is not going to UFC. Uh, that, that door is closed, he said. Because he said he's getting old enough that he's got a family, he's got kids, he wants to take care of that. And uh, WWE is his place to be after WrestleMania. So there's that. Brock Lesnar is not done with the WWE. Everybody now says, oh, now Brock's going to win. Now Brock's going to win at Mania. He's got to win. He's got the contract. He's got to win, right? I don't know. I think this is WWE's way of throwing a wrench in there. Or the way that I look at it. This is the way that I see it. ESPN asked the question. And, 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 I, and I don't know if this is 100% true. Let me just say that right off the bat. I will say that because... Uh, there were probably our reports already out there because I, I wasn't too heavy on reading the dirt sheets about it because it wasn't a story that interested me. I figured Brock was staying with WWE. They would have been stupid not to get him to sign again. So that's that's my thing. I didn't really read into it too much. But the way that I see uh, this one playing out, and let's just guess on how I think this one went down because that's all it is. It's just a guess here. I'm thinking that WWE had Brock signed a long time ago. They would be very, very stupid not to sign Brock Lesnar after the contract they gave him and the success he had last year at WrestleMania leading up into the issue. Like, you would have to figure that you need to sign Brock Lesnar for one more year to get this uh, this WWE championship. You know, if he's, he was the WWE champion, and he is going into Mania, and if you don't sign Brock, it's stupid because he's such a huge name and he's such a, a huge guy. You have to keep Brock around, so... My thing was that they knew that Brock uh, was staying with the WWE. That's how I how I saw it. They knew it. Um, they were just trying to play up the story where you didn't know, so then you wouldn't know what was going to happen at Mania. And you're like, okay, maybe Brock is leaving. Maybe, just maybe, Brock might win or lose or draw or whatever. Nobody really knows. But I think... And I may be completely wrong. The story might have already been out there. They, they, they might have already told it. I'll just say this. Maybe, just maybe, Brock Lesnar leaked that on his own without telling WWE. And now WWE is stuck with it. And they have to roll with it. Because I think, why would you announce it right away? Why would you not wait till after Raw, the Monday Raw? Why would you not wait till then to announce it and just say, Hey, um, you know, I'm not going to make my decision if I sign with WWE until after Raw. Such a compelling story. And I think what happened was Brock did it on his own. WWE didn't know it. And uh, they had to run with it. Or maybe they're trying to swerve us to think that Roman Reigns can't win because Brock resigned. I mean, it's very compelling. Like, the more and more... I don't like the way they've built up this match. I don't think the... I'm not going to say that. I was going to say, I don't think the match is going to be great. There, You know what? This could be one of those WrestleManias where they surprise me. And they do the moments. like They have those WrestleMania moments when you don't think there's going to be any. That's what I'm hoping that I'm going to see this Sunday. But the way that I predict that it's going to go down is uh, they're going to try and go out there and put on a fight. And they're going to try and put on something awesome. I mean, they have to make Roman look strong. The only prediction that you can't really make is the outcome because I don't know. And that's that's the good thing that they've got with this story where, okay, Brock did resign, so maybe he's going to keep that title. Or maybe they came up with a story where Roman Reigns looks strong. I don't know. Uh which championship are you going for at WrestleMania? I'm going for the WWE Championship. I'm going for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I'm going for the WWE United States Championship. Or I'm going for the Intercontinental Championship. A lot of people said, once you win the WWE Championship, it fast forwards. I'm going for World Heavyweight Championship only because I do not want the game to fast forward. If I'm completely wrong on this, and I could have picked WWE Championship, 
It's fine, but this is the different road I'm taking. I gotta win the World Heavyweight Championship first. So there we go. That's the path I chose. Could have gone Intercontinental Greatness. But I chose... That would be hilarious. Like, now Roman Reigns is like, yeah, I want the United States Championship. That's what I want. So let's go with that. Anthony Douglas. You've chosen a fight for the World Heavyweight Championship. So tonight... So for tonight's match, I've chosen an opponent... Superstar who has fought in WrestleMania. Wait, what? I've chosen an opponent superstar. That doesn't make sense. Whatever. Let's get to the show on the road. Ah, oh, Phil Brooks. CF Punk. CF Punk. CF Punk. Was this a rib? Did they say the main event at WrestleMania or at WrestleMania? Because if they said main event, this is a total rib. On. CM Punk, CM Punk. Let's start up. Let's do chain wrestling. Here, let's circle around and lock up. Look at that. Look at that classic chain wrestling. Oh, one more. All right, here we go. Got the side headlock. There we go. Oh, Punk got out of it. Drop down. There we go. German. Eat, sleep, German, repeat. So like I said, um, with the Brock Lesnar and that story... It's one of those really compelling, I wouldn't say compelling, it's one of those, uh, you never really know what's going on, and that's kind of the best way that I look at it. Because last year, even though it was cool, it was very predictable that Daniel Bryan was going to come out on top. I mean, it had all the signs there for Daniel Bryan to come out on top. Why wouldn't they have Daniel Bryan's moment? You know, it just didn't make, it wouldn't make sense if Daniel Bryan did not win last year at Mania. And this year we have a main event where I can't really tell you who's going to win. And I guess that's good. Whether it's going to be a blockbuster five-star match or not, nobody really knows. But what we do know is that they're going to go out there. They're going to try and put on something that's WrestleMania worthy. And uh, you know what? It's actually a good thing that I'm not excited for WrestleMania. I'm just going to say that. It's a good thing sometimes when you don't. When you're not excited, because if, if you're overhyped for something, you know what I mean, you get overhyped, then you you get disappointed when it does not deliver. And now, I'm not saying I have low standards, because it's WrestleMania, it's going to be awesome. And, and just being, being there live and being at Access and being at the Hall of Fame and all that stuff, it'll be cool. But I mean, like, now that I have low expectations... There could be those moments where it's like, holy crap, that was awesome. And I might be jaded based off of uh, just the fact that I'm there live. And that always jades my opinion. But that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say at least we have low expectations going in. And I, I, I'm i not going to say that for a lot of the majority of the WWE fans. Because that tug of war ending on Raw was very weird. And I guess the live crowd didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. And, uh, yeah, so that's the way that I see it. I say that we keep the low expectations. That way we can have those WrestleMania moments that surprise us. And uh, maybe, just maybe, it'll be a, an awesome WrestleMania and we never saw it coming. So you never know. That's just something I can hope for the best and prepare for the worst. But I'll be there live. So, you know, that's the one thing you got to give it to WWE about is they know how to put on a live event. They know how to make the granddaddy of them all, the spectacle that it is, the access and all the theatrics and everything behind it. And uh, regardless of how the pay-per-view plays out, it'll still look great. It'll still be a fun environment. It'll still be a good atmosphere. But we'll see the, the true outcome of that, that main event. And let's talk a little bit about WrestleMania as well. Um, because I do have a few concerns... And the other concern that I have is that Sting is not going to be able to uh, perform up to par. Like a lot of people are, are thinking that Sting might not be able to handle it. I think he's like 56 years old or 57. I can't. I think it's 56. Could be wrong. But there's that. And then uh, the other factor that I really want to know. What the? Get up. The other factor that I have is that. Mishinoku Driver! 
The other factor that I have is that Bray Wyatt is not going to win against The Undertaker. And that's the biggest thing that worries me about this. Is that Bray Wyatt has to win. He has to win. He has to earn with the chair. And I absolutely love that. I think that is the coolest thing ever. The lightning bolt struck the chair. I was like, okay, whatever. The lightning bolt struck the chair. The chair's gone. That's fine, whatever. But no. The chair is not gone. His ashes are in an urn, and I love it. And it's Sister Abigail's chair, and it's freaking fantastic, and I think it's amazing. Now Bray needs to get the victory at WrestleMania. He has to. He has to win. And there's two factors going into it. One, we know they're setting up for for Sting versus Taker next year. I know that's what they're going for next year. Boom! So if they're setting up Sting versus Taker, you make Taker look weak, you make Sting look strong, and that's what you do. Just saying. Just saying with that one. But Punk reversed it. But, but here's the way that I see it. I think Bray... Bray needs to beat The Undertaker. He has to beat The Undertaker. If he does not beat The Undertaker, it'll be the dumbest thing ever. Bray has not won a big match yet. And don't count that exploding television thing because that's the only really big match. I just don't like... If you go back, I went back and watched it because I was such a huge fan of the promo for John Cena versus Bray. And it was such a great build. It's like... John Cena's a fraud, he's a phony, he doesn't believe what he says, and his legacy is on the line, and he's going to lose at WrestleMania 30. And I thought that was such a great story with the legacy song and, and uh, Eminem and all of that. And then they have John Cena win. Oh, Cena Punk's going to dive. Here he goes. The NXT dive spot. Oh, here we go. CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. Oh, I could have reversed it, but I didn't because I wasn't paying attention. But here's what I was saying. Let me digress and go back into what I was saying. Um, yeah, so that buildup for that match was great. The promo was awesome. I liked the John Cena Bray Wyatt thing. You should have had Bray Wyatt win. I don't know why you wouldn't have Bray Wyatt go over John Cena. I think he won at Extreme Rules. But I could be wrong. I can't remember. My history does not, uh, not, I don't know my history very well of that feud. But I will say this, Bray Wyatt needs a big WrestleMania win. He needs to go over The Undertaker, and he needs to be the new dead man, the new Lord of Darkness, if you will, which is a great nickname for him. Let's call him the Lord of Darkness, Bray Wyatt. Why not? But there you go. You have to have Bray win. If Bray does not win, it is not good. It is, I think this might be a year for the young guys. And that's what I want to see. I hope. I'd love. See, there's two, two schools of thought here. I kind of want John Cena to win that title, that U.S. title, so that he can bring prestige back to it. be kind of cool. But I also want Rusev to win. So that they can have the young guys look strong. And, I, and I, I always think. I think John Cena needs to let down his guard. He needs to let the young guys get one up. Like I really, really, really do think Bray should have won last year. And if he doesn't win this year. It's very, very damaging to Bray. I don't know that Rusev really needs the win or the loss. Won't. I don't think anything's really going to matter with Rusev. I would just like to see him continue on his path of destruction. But. I really do think Bray Wyatt needs to win. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy with this. Maybe I'm the only one out there that thinks Bray Wyatt really needs to win or it's damaging to his career. But you guys let me know if you're on the same thought process with me. Because that's what I think. I think you don't have Bray win. It doesn't look good for him. Just what? Just just one man's opinion. And I've been getting GOAT matches. Your Royal Rumble victory was a travesty. We're going to make sure... The wrong is corrected. And there's nothing you can do about it. Okay. All right. Let's start a Twitter war. That's fine. Twitter war. Twitter war. Twitter war. Yeah. So WrestleMania, there's a lot of uh, 
ifs, ands, or buts and coke and nuts that I'm not sure where they're going with this, but I hope they make the right decision. I think this is a transitional WrestleMania as much as I don't like to say that it is a transitional WrestleMania. That's the way that I see it. Sheamus, Anthony Douglas, Swagger versus Shield. But I think this might be a transitional mania. And the reason I say that is because next year in Texas, they want to clear that attendance record. They want to go above the Andre Hogan attendance record that some say may not be a true number. Whether you agree with that or not, here's what you agree on is that they are trying to make WrestleMania next year. Bigger than that. Bigger than ever. To do that, you're going to put Sting and Undertaker one-on-one. And that's going to be a draw regardless of how it's going to play out. If they're too old, whatever, 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 you do that. So this year is a transitional one to get to that mania. So whatever they do with Sting, whatever they do with Taker, they're going to set up something either at this mania or at next mania where they lead to that match and they build it up for a year. I think it's time where they're going to do another year build for a big pay-per-view match. And that match is going to be Sting and Taker. And they're going to play mind games with each other. But it's just a very different circumstance with these two guys because they're both not full-time workers and wrestlers. Like when you do Sting and Triple H or you do Bray and Taker, you have both of those guys, which is Bray and uh, Triple H, who are there full-time all the time at Raw. And they're there. They're out there. They're doing their thing. And then you can have Undertaker come out. Or you can have Sting come out. Whatever you want to do. While those guys are still out there full time. But you don't have Taker and you don't have Sting who are there full time. They aren't wrestling in matches. I mean the best that you could do is a month build for this story. I mean I know they want to they wanna do a huge build for it. Build up for a year like I said. But... Can you really build that for a year when you don't have one guy who's full-time? Like, I just don't understand it. I don't know how that's possible. I really do not. I don't... I don't know. I've been thinking about this for a little bit. And I thought, you know, like, they need to do a year build for it. But then, like, how can you... How can you do a year build for that... For that match? Is Sting gonna wrestle at SummerSlam? I mean... He could, I guess, after Mania, he could wrestle at SummerSlam or Survivor Series or whatever. I mean, there is options to have Sting work more, but I think they're saving him for a big WrestleMania match. I mean, unless they do a Sting Triple H rematch, which I don't know that that's the route to go. I'm just wondering, I, I don't know. It's very, it's very hard for me to pick out uh, how to build the Sting Taker, because ultimately... I'm thinking that's where they're going next year. These two can have their match. They can finish their careers, whatever they want, whatever, whatever, whatever. And just uh, just let it play out. That's what I really think. Taker's last match is against Sting. Sting's last match is against Taker. Perfect send-off for the two. End it. And then that's it. But I just don't. I'm just one. Hey, look, hot tag. Boop. But I'm just wondering exactly how you're going to build that match for a year or not a year or whatever they're going to build it for. I'm still just trying to figure it out. No, get the stairs down. What am I doing? I don't know. Maybe some of you guys have better ideas than me, but as far as I'm concerned, you can't really build this for a year. But I could be wrong. It's the, that's the big problem in WWE when you have a few part-timers. Now with Brock, you still have Paul Heyman who goes out there every week and uh, he can continue the feuds, which is great. Um, but, you know, with like a Sting or a Taker, you, you don't have that. You don't. You don't get that. You don't get that. There's not that element. You can do all the spooky and the crazy and the weird things that you want. But it's still not going to be... It's not going to add up. It just doesn't add up. You know what I mean? I don't know. 
I don't know. I might just be thinking over overthinking it, but wrestling is always simple. You can always keep it simple. Oh, shoulder block. Yeah, look at that. I just kid. That was pretty cool. But like I was saying, wrestling is simple. You don't have to be all elaborate. Look at the way NXT works. They have the simple storylines and it works. And it's cool because um, also I was talking about, you know, like building up the guys and having the young guys come up and uh, building it for WrestleMania 32. Well, I hear through the grapevine, not sure if this is true or not. Um, usually after Mania, they like to call up somebody from NXT. And the name I've been hearing going around is Finn Balor coming up to the main roster. I don't know how true that is. That's the rumor going around. I'm going to say that would be freaking fantastic. I mean, he's very. Maybe that's why they never did any different body paint with him. That's probably why they never did any different body paint with him, was because they wanted to. Uh, no, A, there's two reasons why they didn't di do different body paint with him. Um, A, they wanted to sell the hell out of that t shirt they made with that, with that face paint on it. And B, they might be calling him up to the main roster and they want to save that. I mean, think about this. Okay, so they have that NXT battle, NXT tournament, I believe, uh, tomorrow. And uh, the winner of that tournament goes on to the Andre Battle Royal. Think about a Finn Balor WrestleMania entrance. Oh, my God. I always think it's uh, Adrian Neville going to win that one. That's my, my thought. Or Tyler Breeze. Who knows? But I will say that I like I don't know I like the the possibility of a young WWE roster once you phase out Triple H which Triple H is great in like a authority role but when you phase out um come on let me tag there we go when you phase out uh, Sting you phase out Taker and you phase out all the, all the older guys and you let like Chris Jericho Jericho says I'm only working house shows because I don't want to take the spotlight away from the young guys great mentality right there um, and that's what needs to happen with more and more guys let's get in there and save this no oh, go for the pin swagger oh, I was going in for the save but yeah, more people need to have that mentality. I think it's time for the young guys. Seth Rollins will have an awesome year this year, I, I believe. Uh, Dean Ambrose will have a great year this year, I believe. Bray Wyatt should have a good year. Uh, Roman probably will have a good year, depending on how Mania plays out. Um, for him as well, I, I predict. All right, go for the pin. Go for the pin. Let's go. Get him. Get him. I got him. All right, we'll just hit Roman with our fin. With our Finn Balor. Oh, on the outside. Make Roman look strong. All right. Sheamus. Oh, hit his head on the apron. And Russian leg sweep. Sheamus going for the bomb. The Sheamus bomb. It's a shameful bomb. Lost his bomb. Too many limes. Too many limes. But yeah, so I have hope for the future of WWE. Yes, this mania has been the worst hyped mania of all time. Probably. I went back and uh, watched the uh, last year's hype, which had Randy Orton versus Batista in the main event with Daniel Bryan coming out, Triple H coming out, Seth coming out, and the whole arena did yes at the end of Raw. What a great way to end a Raw before mania. Not a tug of war. It felt like a cool, like, go-home show that could have happened. Not a go-home show, but like a cool show that could have happened, like, two weeks ago, you know? Would have been fitting a couple weeks ago. Not like the go home show to Raw. Oh, Roman wants to get in there. Let's take you out. Boom! Alright, I'm out. Woo! I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Woo! I'm just staying out here doing all the cheap tactics that nobody likes. Get out, Roman. Roman. Seamus, do it! There we go. Bounce his head. Whammy. Rope break. Oh, man. Let's hit him with a super kick. Super kick party. Boop. 
Sheamus, signature pin and win. That's it. One, two, three. Yeah, all because of me on the outside with the distraction. Yeah. Yeah, believe that. <clears throat> So yeah, I don't really know what to say about Mania. I'm excited to go. Again, that butterflies of the travels and the... I don't get scared of flying, but it's like, you know, just you're up in the air and you come down and you're at... You're in... I don't think I go to Chicago. I think I go to Denver. And then I go up and I go down to San Jose. Whoa! Glitchomania! Go up and come down and yes... Seamus loves it. I love it. Swagger loves it. We're all high-fiving. We are the good guys. We just won. Oh, my goodness. Going for the World Heavyweight Champion. Yep. Yep. It's a thing. That is a thing. Instant Classic. That wasn't a goat. All right. I think Elimination Chamber, we should show the Shield what we think is justice. Next week, though, let's make an example of our opponents and get the Shield shaking in their boots. So I forgot we had Elimination Chamber before Mania. Which is cool. Which is fun and fantastic and... All right, what do we got? Who's our match? Spo Dallas. As long as you believe, cut scenes will happen. Give me the cut scene. Give me the cut scene. Give me the cut scene. I said, I said, here we go. Me and Shame is walking out to the ring. We're getting, oh no, it's the shield. They're talking to me again. Oh no, it's Road to WrestleMania. Just got a lot tougher. Oh no. Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you take me out? Why? Oh man, we're injured. Ah. 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 Try to keep cool with the limited shape and you'll get a chance of revenge. But remember, when you're competing for a championship at WrestleMania, oh, but remember, you're getting a championship match at WrestleMania, so don't hurt yourself. Don't get yourself hurt. All right, guys, that does it for this one. I want to come back, and I want to do this all before WrestleMania actually happens so we can have our WrestleMania happen on their WrestleMania. It'll be a cool little thing that's happening at the same time, the WWE WrestleMania with my WrestleMania? Year 4? February 2019? I'm excited. So, anyway, guys, we'll be back with another episode. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoy this. You want to download my CAW? Go on Community Creations and download him. Anyway, guys, again, leave all your thoughts, comments, suggestions in the comment section below. Again, like I said, I want to get this done before WrestleMania, so we'll have a another one come out, and another one, another one, another one bites the dust until next uh, WrestleMania, <laughs> next WrestleMania, until Sunday, before Sunday, whatever I'm trying to say. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Go to Pete's guy. Brag. <laughs>